Yeah, hey, good morning, people. You see them right there? Uh, just got done right after rainstorm over the weekend. Uh, what we're doing today is installing an underground water tank uh, for the irrigation system that we're going to be putting out here. So, with this job, this job we got, I've been here for almost like, I think 17 working days already. There's been tons of underground that's gone through here and there's gonna be a lot more with the irrigation system. I mean, doing landscaping all around, this is all me. Cleaning up the place, I'll, uh, I'll find some before photos. Of what I've gotten, I kinda, I've been uh, deterring myself from doing a video about all this because there's just so much going on, but I kind of feel like at least doing something like this uh, might help some people out. Uh, so these tanks are a lot better than some of the other ones that are out there. I forget the brand name. I don't do this type of stuff that often, but these tanks are way more beef than the yellow tanks you get. Um, beforehand, I used to actually have to internally support the tank with uh, like two inch schedule 80. I'll actually build braces inside these tanks. This one you don't need to and I'll show you one of the reasons why real quick so number one you can't even push this in with your own hand the other ones you can then we actually have lock-in tubes here and that builds structural strength and you can see how everything is built so this thing can't collapse in on itself so we're not gonna have a problem with uh, getting this backfilled I still Still helps to fill it up with water as you backfill, just so you have, you know, resistance, equal forces being pushed up against each other. So that thing is bright. Uh, we're kind of just, I'm cleaning everything up out of the way. I had all this stuff over here in the way. I had all the, that fender board over there out of the way, all that PVC. Uh, and I'll show you kind of guys what we're doing. We're gonna be installing it right over there and I got a bunch of utilities in there. So we're gonna see how we can fit this. see here probably don't even want to put this anywhere that close to where I'm working I'm about to have a lot of dirt excavated out of here so so I got these 15 inch risers uh, with the tank and with these it's gonna make it easy so I, I have uh, the company I bought this tank from and all my other supplies they're gonna be installing the pump filter system and the plumbing for it or the electrical and all that type of stuff they're gonna be doing it I don't want to deal with it I don't know enough about this for uh, me to do it I mean I'm sure I can figure it out but kind of on a deadline timeline but I'm getting everything else routed for them so I have this pool box right here. I have conduit going all the way over there by the excavator for a gate system. And then uh, we have this box that we're gonna be tying off to. It's the main sub panel to the house over here. And then this was the, gonna be the original pad here for an external tank, but my buddy switched. This is my friend's house that I'm working for, so. Uh, he switched his mind. He wants to go a different route because he doesn't want the big old eyesore of a tank sticking out here because it was a 2,500 gallon tank. I already have the water plumbed up here for the irrigation. Uh, so we're going to try to fit the tank right in here. I think we're going to have enough room. I have water. Jeez. Some loud tires. Um, I do have a water supply for the house going right through here. So I got to stay away from this. Um, and... I know for a fact there's one, but there might be two irrigation lines going through this property to get to other properties. So uh, we'll see if we find those or not. I hope we don't. Then I have these low lines right above me. I hope you can see that. So uh, let's measure it out, see where we can uh, fit all this. A little bit of room on the sides here. We got here, yeah, 14 feet, 17 feet. This is a 1700 gallon 1725 gallon tank and then depth wise plus the risers 
I should have brought my laser with me, but I'll be able to get this done. Not that big of a deal. Minimum five feet. Well, say 55 inches. And then the 15 inch riser. So one of my biggest things is I'm trying to figure out, uh, I want to keep this in our utilities, utility zone. So I want to keep it within this fence line right here because this is all getting fabriced and rocked. There's going to be no grass here or anything like that. Grass is going to start out there. So still want to stay away from this water line we have right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that right there. Yeehaw, that is chalky. Didn't really shake it that well. Whatever. Um... Okay, a little. That's what we're looking at. So getting still getting kind of close to that water line, but I want it off the fence because I need a pad for them to build everything on. I don't think I want everything over there. Okay, I'll change it up just a little bit. We're gonna put it that way a little bit more. Have enough room for power routing draw the water inlet from one side power from one side pump from this side so i think it'll be a good happy medium so yeah nothing nothing there but this that way it's uh oh start making a hole i guess all right swap out buckets i wonder if i can use my big bucket this ground is kind of soft enough for it I don't have to shovel out my tracks again, but it's looking that way. Eh, maybe not. We'll see. It's not that bad. We'll see how much we can do with the big bucket. If you guys are new here, this thing holds about a yard, 72 inches wide. It's uh, very, very convenient to have, I'll tell you that much. Well, having a hydraulic quick coupler is even better. See kind of mess we get into. About inch and a half, two inch of topsoil out here when we get before we get the sod in. So still got a lot of stuff to do. Well, at least the sod's not even ready yet for the the delivery. So I'm not that worried about it yet. Sorry, puppy dog. I gotta work here though. Okay, let's uh. It's gonna be a tight fit through here, but we'll, we'll get it done.
found one line. I didn't break it. It's kind of a nice thing with uh, excavating that with a smooth bucket. I was able to actually see the color change on the trench line that this was here in. So I started digging a little bit more carefully than I found it. And again, with the smooth bucket, taking small little slices, you can find stuff without breaking it. This is the fifth line I found on this property that's not his that uh, I didn't break, surprisingly enough. They're all irrigation lines that I found, just trenched throughout this entire property. But, I mean, well, this house is relatively new. It's like two years old, so this was in a ranch beforehand. Uh, this was done, I knew about this line because my buddy's line, next house over at least. But there's uh, lines going to other properties back there. There's lines going to that way house over there. So there's like, there's stuff everywhere. But we haven't broken anything yet. But I got to figure out a way to move this out of the way because I need this spot. As I eat my amazing burrito. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> he got me coffee too. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go get some supplies for that line. Reroute it up and around. I'm, I don't, I don't want to leave it under the tank. Uh, this needs to go around. So it's going to suck, but it, I'm going to dig a little bit larger hole. If I can get back on this pipe, or I just, you know, get back in the pipe area, I'm going to reroute this thing around the tank. I don't want it to be underneath and step back out. Yeah, it's going to probably slow his water down, but that's the only way I want to do it without any possible settling of that tank and then fracturing that line then having a big old sinkhole right in here with a two inch line with 30 30 to 40 psi going the irrigation we don't want that under the ground so well under the tank i have to wash these off sick all right my apologies it's uh it's been a little while, got sidetracked with a few other things I had to take care of, get worn out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna throw the tank in here, see if this tie down holds. My chain was a little bit too big, so then I gotta do one of these. waiting for our water agency to turn the irrigation back on since they locked the valve because it had some problems in the past uh, but they turned it off for me now i need them to turn it back on because i had to reroute that pipe i need that on so i can run my line into this tank the biggest thing is you want to fill the tank with water at the same time that you're backfilling i already have a little bit of backfill that helped me sell the tank to the elevation and the grade i needed for it to sit level uh, but from here on out, I need to uh, start filling this up with water before I start getting crazy with the backfill, and I don't know when they're going to get to doing that. I can't...
well good morning folks so we have uh we are technically when i started this it was we're on day four now uh clearly we got everything backfilled sorry on the last half of the video i just it was just going to town getting things done you saw me packing everything in so we have good retention in here uh this stupid poly lid's a little bit crooked it's kind of annoying but i'm hoping i can when i rock and fab in fabric all this maybe i can kind of hide the crookedness of that plate the tank is dead level but that lid is just meh, uh poly tank problems but uh, i'm just doing a little bit of insulation on the pipes here um i'm not going to go in depth on how this is done clearly i didn't do it i have the guys that i bought this this from they installed it all for me um we did have one issue though this pressure switch um funkied out and uh when everything was cycled everything worked properly but the pump all of a sudden kicked on i didn't realize because i was out doing my other stuff it stayed on for about four hours straight as far as i can assume because i left here around like six or seven o'clock uh something in here uh fedangled up and started running the pump so the pump was running it wasn't cavitating there was water in there but the water had nowhere to go. These couplers were so hot, it burnt his hand, burnt my hand. I was like, there's no way it's that hot. Yeah, I had to give it a try. So uh, rebuilt the impeller, rebuilt the entire pump assembly. The motor's fine. There's nothing wrong with the motor, uh, but the entire impeller started melting and destroying. It was still pumping, but it, was, it, it got all rebuilt, all new seals, everything. All new lines through here because everything got destroyed because of the heat. Uh, they replaced the, the switch valve and they adjusted it again. Uh, now it's working properly. That's off. This is on. But just getting finished up insulation. So if anything, yeah, I thought that that little bit of work was a fun thing to show you guys. Uh, placing an in-ground tank. Uh, those can be used for septic use uh, or water holding capabilities and have it underground, out of the weather, out of the sun. Uh, so we're all good. So if anything, I hope it was just a fun little video. Um, I don't do stuff like this that often, so I'm kind of, I always like kind of digging stuff and putting stuff in the ground. It's always entertaining. Uh, not trench line though, that stuff's boring. Um, other than that, please don't ask too many questions, but if you guys have uh, input or something that you think that I could have done to maybe make something better, or hopefully this helped you out, or you have some experience on what you've done to do this type of stuff, I'm always, always happy to learn learn new things so uh let me know other than that i hope you enjoyed the video you guys have a good one say bye warren oh he's tearing up his toy octopus down all right you guys take care